Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott. Hey, yo. He's got his younger brother. It's going to be Jeff. The cream rise to the top. Oh, yeah. And you're listening to all of the great action figures from our good friends at Hasbro. The fully postable. Have your own WrestleMania with all your favorite figures. Wrestling figure. He sold separately from LJN. Podcast. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional <laughs> wrestling. Hey, welcome to episode 404 of the Fully Posable Wrestling Figure Podcast. Longest running episodic wrestling figure podcast going today. My name is Jeff with one F. Sitting alongside next to me is my real life brother, not storyline brother, Scott. Scott, say hello. Hello. People at work kind of like make fun of it. They say Jeff with one F. Yeah. What's unique, right? Like when you see Jeff. Or Jeffrey, it's always J E F F. It's never one F. Or I'm associated with the, the not the dinosaur. I almost said the dinosaur. I got Jurassic Park on the mind because Breaker and I talked about that on TV Toycast. <laughs> no, the right. giraffe of Toys R Us. Oh yeah, Jeffrey the giraffe. Yeah, it's not J E F R Y. And actually, that's with a G. Yeah, exactly. Which is another kind of a weird thing. There's so many ways to spell Jeffrey, but I think our parents definitely found the most unique definitely the most unique i think there's like i've seen baseball players with the same spelling as j-e-f-r-y too but they weren't in the le- in the bigs that long well yeah because their names weren't spelled right yeah messes everybody up exactly we're too busy explaining why we have one f one r one y all that shit y- yes the whole five letter <laughs> thing in the family yeah it's a long story scott what's going on dude man i am battling allergies this week but thankfully <laughs> uh out of the, out of the flu woods it's like, it's, it's not something, it's something else, dude. But like the weather's starting to shift. It's getting a little bit colder out here. So anytime the weather changes, allergies just start to go bonkers. So taking my Zyrtec, dealing with that. So if I sound a little stuffy or whatever, that's why. But uh, definitely better than last week. You got the battery on about 98% right now. So uh, you're in good shape, Jeff. Unlike last week where at the opener, I had about maybe uh, 17% on the battery. Okay, so last week, episode 403. That was flu. Yes. Episode 404. I'm writing this down. Allergies. All right. Yeah. So out of 52 shows in a year, you can count on me having allergy issues for, I would say, a good 55% of them. (laughs) I thought you were going to say 55. That would have been cool. Yeah. (laughs) Out of 52, I'm good for about 55 of them. (laughs) Yeah. Got to include all the special episodes, all the special interviews and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's just... It's the California weather, man. It's just it's so up and down and crappy climate out here with all the trees and crap. And ugh, it's just, yeah. it, it reeks out. Like, I wonder what my allergies would be like if I lived in another state. Stupid, dumb trees. I think they're the worst. They are the worst. Yeah. They don't even have fruit hanging off of them either. It's just these stupid yellow things that fall in your hair and attract bugs. Redwoods. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Wood would if anybody would like to get any of our shirts head on over to pro wrestling tees or what a maneuver dot net you can follow us on twitter x on the twitter x i should say youtube snapchat and the book of faces at fully opposable instagram fully opposable w f p you can go back and listen to any of our past podcasts on fully opposable podcast.com stitcher itunes iHeartRadio, and spotify please rate and review and subscribe on itunes and you can send us any audio questions, questions, or anything else at all. Send it on over to fully posable WFP at gmail.com. Scott, have you picked up anything recently? Uh, let's see. Did I do any? No, I didn't do any ordering. Uh, BBTS got in my Batman 66 Batman and Robin figures. Okay. So I've currently got eight items sitting in my pile of loot at BBTS. So that's going to be a fun box to get shipped. But uh, no, I didn't order anything. I did go to Denver this past week. We didn't make it over to 5280s. Do a little international toy spotting. Yeah, we went to some Targets and some Walmarts, and I bought a buttload of cards. Uh, a buttload. Is that equivalent to Hella? Yes. More than Hella? Less than Hella? Equivalent. Equivalent to Hella. Yes. The Got same it. as. The same as. Not as much as a shitload. No, no. But yeah. it's, it's Hella or buttload. Right. Got so, it. So that many cards. So... Dude, I'm opening up the boxes 
first three were duds. I didn't get anything. That's so discouraging. I open up the fourth box and there's a Tony D'Angelo autograph from NXT. I was like, oh, okay, nice. here, here we go. Now we're talking. Dude, Dude when I, was the last time that you opened us uh, outside of those wrestling cards that we opened up when you came over after uh, Stockton Con? Outside of those autograph cards, when was the last time you opened a pack and got an autograph? Uh, actually, just a couple of weeks ago when I opened up the blaster box from Target in Lone Tree, California, Colorado, sorry. Oh, and I, okay. and I, got the, I got the Kiana James. Oh, I, right. Okay. Got it. Dude, what a feeling when you move a card and there's a signature. Yep. Holy crap. That is just, in, I remember back in the day, uh, I forget. Oh, it was Upper Deck. Upper Deck be a player. Hockey cards. Uh-huh. It used to be, I was. I want to say it was one per box uh, autograph. If mm-hmm. you bought a case, you were guaranteed one signature. Then I believe it was 94, 93, 94, somewhere in that, 95 maybe, uh, mid-90s, early to mid-90s. Every pack had an autograph. Now, this was back in the early to mid-90s. I think those packs were going for like seven, eight bucks, something like that, which, I mean, in in that time, that that's a considerable amount of money for a card. It might have even been 10 bucks. But Mm -hmm. I bought a case or a full box and I hit a Messier and I will never forget. And Mark Messier is one of my favorite players of all time. It's him and Jeremy Roenick, uh, number one and number two. Uh, When I pull, move that card aside, because it's always the last card, right? In the pack that has the autograph. Not nowadays. No, no, no. I mean, back then. Oh, okay. The last card in the pack was the autograph. So you're like rifling through the front ones because it's like, it's like reading a birthday card when you know there's money in it and you don't want to be rude and like start counting your cash before you read i love you thank you for being a great blah 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 blah. like oh thank you for the beautiful card and oh hey look here's four hundred dollars (laughs) yeah you know it's one of those things like you're trying not to be rude to the pack and ignore all the front runners here but then you you you're just trying to get to that meat and potatoes at the end and i'll never forget pulling that mark messier dude the feeling like not only is it an autograph of a great player? It's an autograph from one of your favorite players. And I was like, immediately throw it into like one of those hard plastic cases. I ran downstairs and showed dad. He didn't care, but I had to tell somebody, I was like, Oh my God, I got Mark Messier. But like (laughs) to your point about like pulling an autograph of somebody that you're excited about, like I totally know the feeling and it's really hard to match that feeling and try to put it into words to somebody that doesn't understand the excitement of pulling an autograph card. So I, I I know exactly what you were feeling when you pulled that card, dude. That's awesome. So the other cool thing was, is I also pulled a number to five Von Wagner NXT card. That's insane. A number to five. A number to five and autographed. Man. Now, I don't have any of the plastic sleeves or the uh, top loaders or anything like that. Well, you weren't going to Colorado expecting to buy cards. Exactly. So I'm like panicking. I'm like, okay, how am I going to pack these to get them home? Yeah. So I had to consolidate all the cards into three boxes. Lesson learned. Now, when you go on these trips, dude, you got to just start packing sleeves. I I, do. Come on now. What? (laughs) This is is ridiculous. What am I doing? No, it's not. No, it's not. You you, look, if you're going to be in Colorado seven, eight times a year, start packing those top loaders. I I guess. (laughs) Always carry protection, dude. Always carry protection. I always always do that for the cards. For your cards. (laughs) Yes. So anyways, I got at that, I got a one of 10 gold, uh, one, two, three kid. I got a number to 49 Bret Hart. I mean, dude, I was just hitting, uh, well, of course I bought a buttload of blasters, spent a buttload, a buttload, hella, whatever, hella. not and, a shitload, a buttload. Oh dude. It was, it was quite a bit. Anyways. That's great, dude. What, what a vulgar display of buying cards. I love it. It was so fun, dude. That's awesome. That's all. And you know what? If it's important to you. And you're okay with spending the money on it and you had fun doing it. Good for you, dude. It was like, I was telling my coworker, Eric, it's like standing there opening those cards is like going right back to the eighties. Yeah. It's that feeling of like happiness of the times that you and I were opening up tops, 86 tops, 85 tops, 87, right. Opening up score, opening up upper deck, opening up Donruss, dude. It just takes me right back to that. And sitting in my hotel room, just popping up cards. Granted, I wish I was with you or, you know, opening up cards and hitting an autograph and like celebrating, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you want somebody there with you to like share in the triumph. 
to celebrate, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pop the bottles. This is awesome. Exactly. So, anyways, I bought hell of cards this week, dude. So that's anyway. great, dude. You are uh you're definitely getting sucked into this hobby for sure. Eh, kind of, maybe. We'll see. Not kind of, dude. How many boxes did you buy? Let's because you keep saying a buttload, but let's put a number on it. Uh, More I, or less than 10. What if it's at 10? Then say 10. 10. Wow. Yeah. Good for you, dude. That's awesome. And you had some hits. You pulled a Brett, a number to 49. That's phenomenal. It was just fun, dude. It was just fun. That's great. But just don't forget. What? Next time, yeah. take your top loaders. Yeah, I know. Top loaders with the plastic sleeves, too. Because I've realized you cannot put the card just in the top loader. It just there's a feeling. It just doesn't feel right. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah. So in the plastic sleeve into the top loader. Top loader. And yeah, then don't be silly. Wrap that Willie McGee. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people are going to get that, dude. Scott is feeling so much better this week. It's awesome. <laughs> you're at 97% on the, uh, the Boy, meter. you're you're dying faster than my phone. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Willie McGee joke took a lot out of me. <laughs> 2% gone all of a sudden. <laughs> they don't uh, come cheap, dude. Come on. Come on now. On this show, it's going to be the news, and we're going to jump right into a special interview with Michael Kanick and Brian Myers from the Major Pod. And Impact Wrestling, Impact Superstar Brian Myers. Yep, and you guys are going to hear them talk about the big rubber guys, about the bendies, about figures in general. You guys are going to enjoy that interview. But Scott, what do you say we jump into some news? Let's go talk about it. All right. Zombie Sailor showed off his Mr. Hughes with the urn. Good looking figure. Uh, I do got to say zombies realism on his figures. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. They are. They are outstanding. A lot of players in the retro game right now, but uh, zombie is, is definitely, if he's not at the top, he's damn near the top. Uh, That Mr. Hughes. Yeah. You're right. Dude is, is fantastic. Really Mm -hmm. well done. Breaker and I were talking about it. Like, his figures are so realistic. I mean, it's just crazy. But one, and I'm not knocking zombie or anything, so don't take it out of context. But one thing I do like is I like having some cartoonish to the toys. I like, well, sure. Yeah. Cause there's that Hasbro retro cartoony look that we've kind of talked about with Hasbro. So yeah, you want it like true to form, if you will. Exactly. Not knocking zombie. I like what he's doing, but at the same time, I still like having my toys look like toys. And I, that's why I love that Mitch Hassel toy, Ahmed Johnson. And have you seen his men on a mission? They're great. Yes. Very well done with those as well. Uh, but it's it's one of those things that it's very subjective, right? Mm-hmm. Like everybody's got a preference. Some people like the zombie look, other people like the Hassel toys. So other people like, you know, the Epic it, it's, it, it's a preference. It's what you want it to be. You're more of a traditionalist in terms that you want it to have that, um, that kind of cartoony Hasbro look. Yeah. But other people are really digging the realism. That's kind of a blend of what Hasbro did with what Mattel is doing. Yep. So, you know, there's, there's a little something there for everybody. And that's, that's really cool. It's what I love about our hobby, dude. Yeah. All right. Moving over to KWK. When the show drops, you will have nine days left to get the pre-order in for the comic kid. That is nine days, AKA Max moon. Go look at all the accessories that are coming with that figure. Looks great. Ton of deco. Ton, Ton of, deco. of deco. Sean and his team put so much work into that figure. Uh, and that's just the first of his figures that's going to be coming out. Uh, he's also going to be released as part of the Orient Express. But I mean, if you're if you're a 90s kid and you've got a Hasbro collection, Max Moon, or I'm sorry, the Comet Kid mm-hmm. fits perfectly into that. And you're not going to be disappointed. Outstanding looking figure. Like I said, ton of work by Sean and his team. Uh, went into that figure so definitely at least go give it a look uh but you'll definitely want to jump in on that because secondary market prices you don't like them you don't like them we don't no nobody no. likes secondary market prices dude no 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 okay. no don't look up those sold prices scares you right away <laughs> uh mitch over at hassle toys he showed off his next two figures duke the dumpster drossy he'll come with a garbage can and Carlos Colon Jr., a.k.a. Carlito. The apple will be in the right hand. Also, retros, so check those out. Those look good, too. Yeah, those are great, man. And there's just so much competition in the retro market right now. I mean, you've still got 
the big giant in the room, Mattel, still playing in the retro domain. So, man, a lot of competition. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's great for the wrestlers, right? Because that's more of a selection of guys we get made. And you're not having to rely on one company, i.e. Mattel, to release everybody. Yeah. So it, it, good on good on the other retro companies out there that are grabbing up names and giving these older wrestlers a paycheck. I dig it. All right. Let's head on over to FOCO. They showed off their big head guys. What was it? Big head? I think it was big head guys. Bobble head guys. The FOCOs? Yeah. Big big heads? I think they were big heads. Anyways. Big, big bear. Big bear chase. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody gets that reference, holy crap. You guys are our best friends. I'll send you some base cards of the... Uh, <laughs> I got so many goddamn base cards now. Sometimes these jokes are just for you. Like, I just try to pop you. Like, if you get it, I'm happy. Hey, well done, dude. Very Thank well you. done. All right. Uh, for Foco, they have Brett in NWO gear where he has the world title on. He's got a hat backwards and sunglasses on. Are you in on that one? Nah, I'm out on that one, dude. You're skipping? Yeah. Yeah. I did get the Brett where he was, he's got the stage or he's on the Titan Tron deal. The $90 one? Oh, yeah, dude. Damn, look at you being a baller. I love it, dude. I love it. How about this? I'd say about 70% of the stuff they do with Brett, I'll probably be in on. Okay. Got it. And you got that heart foundation set too, right? Yep. Actually, I'm looking nice. at it right now. It's That's right, awesome. Right over to my left. All right. Triple H was in his WrestleMania 30 outfit with the gold mask and the red robe. And Undertaker from when he came back with the broken face. The bro- <laughs> Yeah. From 1994. When Mabel broke his face. Was it Mabel? Yeah, it was oh, I'm sorry, Mabel. Yokozuna. Yoko, Wait, no, it was Mabel. Yeah, somebody crushed his orbital bone, right? He got with the purple. Oh, maybe yeah. that was Yoko that broke his face. Yeah, somebody broke his face. Yeah. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. Somebody broke, it was either Mabel or Yoko. Somebody you would not want jumping on your face. Anyways, Undertaker. It was... wasn't Sonny, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> From 1994, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 1990, 1994, Sonny, yes. <laughs> 20... Right. 2023, Sonny. <laughs> uh, okay, still yes. No, Get I'm off kidding. Me nails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Foco made a bobblehead of that. Anyways, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> All right. WWE Mattel per action figure attack. The LWO five pack will be less than five elites put together. Dude, we just talked about that last week too. What was the price point going to be? Yeah, you said it was going to be somewhere around 100, but it's looking like it's going to be less. Okay, that's hey, good on you, Mattel. I know. Bundle and save, apparently. I think I'm going to be in on that. And I think that's available. That will go up on Mattel Creations November 9th. I believe you're right. Also, WWE Superstar lineups, they will consist of three figures per wave in 2024. And there will be no more repeats. Uh oh. What? Is that the, the faint sound of a gong in the instance? Or in the distance. Like what do you mean? The, the the death gong for the superstars line? No, 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 no. no? These things are... I hope not. I don't want it to be. No, I think they're just scaling back and they're going to make sure that there's no more repeats. Because that series... I always get my series mixed up. So that series five or series four got... Theresa. <laughs> Theresa with, uh, with Macho and Rock being added to the next series and it was Rick Rude and Earthquake. Yeah. That got screwy. That just got weird, dude. Agree. Agree. But I don't like that they're reducing it to three. That's okay. That's okay. I don't I dig the no repeats, though. That's a good thing. But if you're going to knock it down to three, release an extra wave or two. These superstars are such a hit, man. And I know there's still still some on the shelves. Didn't say pegs. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't do it. So anyways, glad that they're going to be reducing it. And and it's going to save you money, too. Well, it's good. I mean, I'm not buying them, so it's saving me money either way. But uh, I have not heard from anyone that dislikes this line. It oh. is seriously. I've only seen universal praise for it. Yeah. So I don't see why they would see why there would be a death gong or anything like that. I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Just when I see numbers decreasing and stuff about no repeat, it gets me concerned. But this thing needs to go for a long time. There is such a deep well of names that they can pick from. So. I hope that they keep it going for a really, really long time. It's so funny, dude, talking about regions and all that stuff. When we were out in Denver this past week, kind of rewind a little bit. I've never seen, except for one time, Honky on the shelves of the superstar figures. Okay. Except for one time I picked him up and that was it. 
I go to Colorado. I see Honky every Walmart. Dude, he's like Series 1. They still have him? Yeah, they still have Braze out there, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, I th- I just always find it funny because Breaker was even talking about it, like his Walmart stacked with honkies. Yeah, because they yeah, you're right. Out here, you don't see them. Yep. Also, Monday Night War series, the first wave tentatively, tentatively expected to be on WrestleMania Shipper. The second wave, tentatively, around Aprilish. All subject to change. You know what would go great, Jeff, with that Monday Night War set? What's that, Scott? A nitro stage that you a holes didn't fund. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, fund. well, if you did, I apologize. Yes. This is to the people that were negative Nancy's towards it. Yes. And put the crap into other people's ears or post it on right. Twitter and got your little people behind you. Yeah, the trolls that live under the nitro stage. We will not. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh so anyways those i'm still bitter i oh, oh, dude could you imagine what that stage would look like oh man i don't even want to think about it let's i don't uh, even know where i'd have it in this this office well number one we wouldn't have it in hand yet but true. when we did have it in hand and you built that massive thing i do i have no idea where i'd put i would have to buy a table a special table for it just to put in this room for that stage and you know what i would have done it with a smile on my face <laughs> but guess what what we don't get one now no we don't get one this sucks you think we'll ever be forgiven for that uh <laughs> still too soon huh i think it's a little too soon i don't know if we're gonna see another crowdfund f- until maybe earliest prediction maybe wrestlemania next year or maybe san diego comic-con i just think it would be awesome and we talked about this for the future of the crowdfunding with Mattel. I think that it's going to need a lot of backing by the WWE. So especially something of that magnitude with that price tag. I think it's going to need kind of the WWE machine behind it, plugging it on their shows. Mm -hmm. I think it would make a lot of sense to run these crowdfunds around major pay-per-views, be it WrestleMania, SummerSlam, the Rumble, like one of the big four, maybe not Survivor Series. So let's let's just say Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, or SummerSlam. I think it would make sense to run it around there. And traditionally it, you know, the, the first one was around SummerSlam in 21, I yeah, believe. Something like that, yeah. The one this year was a little after WrestleMania or around WrestleMania is when they were funding it. Yeah. So, like, the template is right, but they need the, the WWE machine behind it talking about it on their shows. Yeah. That just um, seems like a no-brainer. Why not have... I mean, it's your product. The Push other, it on your shows. The other thing is, is you... Yeah, you can rely on the influencers to push it, but sometimes we're not enough. And we fall under that banner too. So yeah, we're yeah. not a, we're not enough. We weren't enough to get it through the threshold, unfortunately. And I'm look, as I said, I'm not trashing anybody, but because we fall under this too. But look what happened one week before the sale was supposed to go off or the crowdfund was supposed to go off. Guess what? They posted on NXT, I think it was. It was NXT. They mentioned it on the least popular of their shows. And did you see the bump it got? It got a spike. And right then it... now, could you imagine if they did that during WrestleMania or during SummerSlam? Exactly. And then what happened when they posted it on or sent a commercial to uh, SmackDown? It was, it was almost like it was too little too late. They got it, it yeah. so... Yeah. I, we were like 1,100 backers, I think it was, away. Yeah, it was close. And so anyways, it was just too little too late. You can't send it off to WWE with right four days left, five days left. Right. Or if you send it to SmackDown two hours left or whatnot. Yeah. It's it just not going to work. Right. Okay. I know I was texting back and forth with Tim at a chair shot on Twitter or on the X. Um, wouldn't it be great if SmackDown mentioned it and it was almost like a Hail Mary and it funded at the last possible second. That would have been great. Turns mm-hmm. out it was all, you know, just it was a big pipe dream, but. Man, you, you got to think with the WWE mach- machine behind it, with the announcers plugging the product. Yeah. What could have been. But I think with the next one, you make it more measured. You have WWE's influence behind it as well being mentioned on the shows. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be very successful for them. But uh, I I tend to agree with you, Jeff, that it's it's going to be a hot minute before we see another one. Yeah. And maybe it, not, it won't be at that price point. So I, I, I'm, You're right about that, too. 
I'm going to, I'm going to make a prediction on the show and it's going to be an off the wall prediction. Bold. But my, my feeling is the next one will be the barbershop window. Okay. That's a safe play. Yeah. And it will be depending on how much accessories and stuff go into it. Maybe a Brutus beefcake ultimate, which I don't know how many people want. It'd be cool if it came with the shaving cream that hits Sid in the face. That'd be funny. But anyway, you could do Shawn Michaels in his leather jacket. Oh yeah. Or, and, or uh, it, the window breaks apart. Of course. So without that, it's not going to sell. So I'm going to say, I got to figure in inflation. You want to keep the price point low on that. The crowd funds in a B one seventy five. See who's not going to buy that. Yeah. And it's going to probably need, I, I I don't know. I have no idea how numbers work. I still think the answer to everything is 35, but I'm going to say you need <laughs> maybe 6,000 backers. Seven. Is that too low? I don't okay, know. Okay. Can I, can I pull a, uh, instead of being salt Bay, I'll be sugar Bay. And I'll do the little elbow cock with a little sugar being sprinkled on it. I'll the, take your barber shop. Wait, did you say, what did you say? Sugar Bay. You also said uh, something with a C, the, the, the what? Mm. I'm going to sprinkle a little sugar on your idea, Jeff, is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm going to sweeten it up. Okay. Keep your price point. All right. Circular platform. Cut it in half. One half of it is barbershop window. The other half is Piper's Pit. It comes with a beefcake. It comes with a Piper to start. And upgrades would be, you can't do Jimmy Snooka, right? But you could maybe do like a Jesse the Body Ventura. So you're talking about a two-in-one playset. A two-in-one playset. And you could even have it do like a rotation if you wanted to, so that you could turn it. And so like one side would be Piper's Pit. The other side is the barbershop window. Okay. I kind of see where you're going with that. So instead of having like one entire dedicated thing, you're actually putting it onto a platform that you could turn so that one side is is the barbershop, the other side's Piper's Pit. Or if you open it up, you can do a two-in-one where you can just keep the platform, but interchange the backdrops or something like, not not like backdrops, but- Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that idea too. The walls and stuff will change. I like that. Okay, I don't hate that. I don't know if they would do a two-in-one. They may save the Piper's Pit for another something, you know, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you got to keep some ammo in the gun. I get what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. But I think if, if they do go that route, Jeff, I think you're right. It would either be Barbershop Window or I think the other option would definitely be Piper's Pit. Bold prediction. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was thinking, keep the price point low. Give us a play set. Yeah. What a, you know, just kind of... Th- you know, wet the appetite, you know, start Throw sm- us a softball. Let us knock it out of the park for you, Mattel. Yeah. Cause something like that, I could see getting 6,000 backers if it was supposed to be 6,000. I don't know what Easy. the figure collectors have been clamoring for a barbershop windows play set for years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think at 175, that's within a lot of people's budget. 400 is kind of a stretch, but you go way under half of that. You're good. We got a lot of good customs, but exactly yeah of course of throw course. Th- throw in some ultimates throw in a beefcake ultimate roddy piper ultimate another one because we're, get- we're supposed to be getting the one with george Steele. right um right. one of these days as you said Shawn michaels maybe that's an unlockable tier with the black jacket you for know. sure for anyways sure. anyways all right enough fantasy booking <laughs> before we turn it over to michael canick and brian myers just real quick. Also, Hassle Toys, going back to him and his retros, showed off the Quebecers. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, so they also showed a announcer or an announcer, Raymond Rougeau. Yes. So he's got a batch of Canadians coming our way. Make and... Red Heart. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm nice. kidding. So Breaker from the TV Toy Cast social media threw out there. Well, if you have some Canadians, you really should add some All-American boys, to which they replied, hold my beer. So you've got to figure, putting two and two together, Rougeau's possibly? Possibly. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. You're hitting all my 80s feels with these. Yep. (laughs) All right. It is now time to turn it over to Michael Canick and Brian Myers from the Major Pod. They are going to talk about their big rubber guys, some bendums. Can't wait to have you guys hear that. We're going to turn it over to them. 
Ladies and gentlemen, joining <laughs> us tonight is the man, the myth, the legend, and the man with so many drunk stories, Michael Canick. Michael, how are you doing, man? Fantastic. Just trying to make more stories. There you go, man. Also joining us is former WWE star, tag team champion, and current <laughs> Impact star, Brian Myers. Brian, how are you doing, man? What's up, guys? I, I knew Connect would be here, so I didn't want to come empty-handed. I might have had a few of these with Heath down in the hotel bar before. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. I feel I need to step away and go get a Los Guerreros or something, man. Like I'm oh, feeling nice. left out here. Yeah. Well, well, cheers. Thanks for having me, guys. No Anytime. problem. Hey, Brian, can you confirm a lot of Canik's uh, drunken stories? By the way, he's had so many. Yes, I can. I think I just, I think I actually I just said this to him like in a personal conversation. I said like when you first meet Kinnick, he just tells you all this all these stories, and you're like look at him like this little guy like no way this happened or this or that, but it's all true. It's all true, man. It's funny because that's not the first time I've heard that. I've heard that same response from multiple people that have gotten to know me throughout. It the years. happens. You'll literally come out of nowhere with some insane story, and you're like, "What? The f- <laughs> what? Why were you hanging out with Mike Tyson or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, whatever. You'll just be like, "Where did that tiger come from?" You'll be shocked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before we get started, guys, uh, why don't you get the plugs out of the way? Yeah, uh, majorpodmerch.com. You can get all your major bendies, uh, big rubber guys. You got um, canicsmerch.com, where you can get some Brian Myers exclusive shorts. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Like that. And, and if you want to follow me, it's uh Canic89 throughout all socials and uh major bendies on Instagram. And big rubber guys. We don't we, we didn't do a separate Brian. So this is your first time on the show. Uh I do have one quick question for you because I do want to get into the big rubber guys. Do you have any memories with LJNs back in the day? Like, do you remember the first time you ever got one? Because I know you're a few years younger than us. So. Yeah. So, but I, I don't have like, it was just funny because Matt and I are the same age. And he has these weird, like vivid memories mm-hmm. of LJNs and he had a collection and all this stuff. Like, I cannot recall seeing one on the shelf, like at all. Like my, I, I think my, my love of Hasbro's come from that. They're like my gateway to my love of wrestling. Because they're literally like hand in hand, like simultaneously. I discovered wrestling and I discovered the Hasbro's were coming out. Like, I want to say there was like a <laughs> month or two of excitement until I finally got them and the rest is history. And then uh, I remember one day my dad came home from work and he wanted to surprise me with something and he gave me the LJN referee. Oh, the, that was the first one. Yeah, but I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? All my hats are all this big. And I got this <laughs> giant referee now. I was so confused. I mean, it was a very nice gesture looking back on it. You know, now that I'm a parent, but like, I was like, what the, like, this doesn't work at all. Like, this guy's like <laughs> double the size of everybody. But that was the one and only LJN I had as a child until, I mean, I became, you know, a super fan and very much a historian of wrestling. And I went back and I, I have every single one mint loose right now in my collection yeah. nice. when you were younger did you ever intertwine the hasbros and galoobs oh of course the hasbros and galoobs I, I thought could mix i always thought like bone crunchers mm-hmm. and wcw toy biz and ecw could mix you know there was a nice era there and then titan trons threw everything for a loop but uh <laughs> to say the least yeah i i always thought i, th- I always thought it was sweet that galoobs and hasbros kind of mix and if you look back on it they both lines really age well because they're they're very um pretty if that makes any yeah, sense makes like, a lot of sense. Sense. they have a shine the, to the them. sculpt yeah and the sculpts of the galoobs are pretty especially for that time like pretty i mean there's no articulation but they're still pretty really nice uh looking figures that's yes. that sting stands up as one of the best of all time i think oh yeah it's a hall of famer yeah, absolutely it's yeah. such absolutely. a beautiful figure those galoobs were just beautiful i mean even the different mm. uh tights or trunks that they threw them in and for the uk's and stuff just yeah. came out beautiful yeah. so yeah yeah Michael, how have you been, man, since you've last been on? I mean, just packing SDL orders all day. <laughs> is that he's a, he's a machine? Is he that is, what you, he's a machine? He is. <laughs> That's not what you were saying earlier. 
I can't fucking stand seeing her face anymore. <laughs> so many orders. Okay, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Uh, 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 I packed so many fucking orders already. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's a good good problem. For how sure. Many, how many are you up to today so far, man? Um, I'm averaging around about 100 orders a day. Ooh. Wow. That is wow. a good that's... problem to have for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. And it's, it's called champagne problems. Um, <laughs> no, that's a hundred orders that I pack and drop off. I do a little bit more um, towards the night, and, and yeah, this is just what I do. <laughs> Guys, I don't, I don't. This is really pulling back the curtain. People don't realize this. Knick doesn't drive, so he walks packages to the post office. <laughs> what? I. It's pretty insane. I get uphill both I ways. Get... <laughs> He's got a I... hot potato in his pocket to keep him warm. It's pretty insane. I get uh, I, I well, I was buying bags before. Then I found out you can get free bags from the post office, and uh, I just fill them up and I walk them over. I, I live about two blocks away from the post office. <laughs> and it's pretty I ridiculous don't... considering he owns a toy company and he's constantly <laughs> shipping out orders. Pretty insane, actually. So, and, so when Brian said that, did anybody else see Michael with a red flyer wagon just walking <laughs> down the street? To, I, that is yeah. awesome. Post- I, that's like what I we have. I have a wagon. A dude. That Major Pod <laughs> technically got me. It was free with an order, but oh my god, <laughs> we've got to get that thing uh, customized, I man. I dude, we'll get you an it. Uber card, and you could just have an Uber roll up, throw all the boxes in the dude's car, ask him to drop them for you. It. It probably takes me about five minutes to walk over to the post office, drop everything off, and walk back. So it's like, it's not that bad. And Brian has seen the garbage I eat and the amount I drink. I need the exercise. Yeah, <laughs> he's not. Yeah, he's not exactly the epitome of health. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Scott and Michael have been on the show before, like confessing their love for Taco Bell. So they definitely. Oh yeah, they definitely have that in common. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that new steak and bacon grilled cheese burrito. Mm-hmm. Steak yes. and bacon. Yes, sir. I, uh, guys, I'll admit Taco Bell was like my be all end all. <laughs> and then I had like a drunken night in the city probably about 15 years ago. And there used to be a Taco Bell in Penn Station, I'm sure Knick is very familiar with. <laughs> yes. And I went, I just like threw it up, had diarrhea, whatever. And then like it went away. Like my like crave, like I used to crave it one all the time. But for some reason, the past like year or two, it's come back a little bit. Oh, oh. Taco time. Yeah. Hey. I, I have made. I have made love to a crunch wrap after an uh, independent <laughs> show. <laughs> Driving home a couple times. Yeah. They are beautiful. Pretty drunk ordering Uber Eats and ordering these insane <laughs> Taco Bell orders. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I lo- okay. So, what's the most amount well, of money you've dropped on a Taco Bell order? Got to know. Oh, man. I don't actually. You know what's funny? This was like, uh, probably like 10 years ago. Well, that, oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, dude. <laughs> I can tell that's that story. Uh, <laughs> we had a live major pod show at Kowloon's in Boston. It's like a famous uh, Chinese restaurant that's, that's massive. And then they, in COVID, they built this like giant tiki bar outside that they never took down. So now there's like this football field sized tiki bar outside. It's like ridiculous. Nice. So we're at, we're out there with everybody post show, and we're just having the best time ever. A very intoxicated, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna get everybody Uber Eats talk about dude. I put in like a insane order like over a hundred dollars to taco bell like just because i was like picturing myself coming back like a king like with all these bags of taco <laughs> bell and just handing out taco bell to everybody having the best time and i'm i like stumble down to the front i'm waiting i'm waiting the guy finally comes he hands me like like a ziploc bag size thing of taco bell and speeds off <laughs> and it's like it's not brian m's order it's like brian h's order or something and i'm like no oh, I like, dude i was so defeated i'm like i can't show my face back there i fucking just told everyone that was coming back with talking about and i'd like i like thought for a second i went and i just ran to my hotel room I, <laughs> the, 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 I ate the three tacos that are in there wherever it was <laughs> called it a night <laughs> that's a good movie somebody got taco bell well i had to put in the like complaint to get my money back too because i was like wait i'm not paying a hundred dollars for three tacos oh hell no mm-hmm. <clears throat> that happened to me today with thai food what did Uber got- Eats is dude? Trust me, I Uber Eats on the road because it's just kind of like the way of life. It's a it's a roller coaster ride. You never know what the hell's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Brian, I know you guys have been doing the show for quite a while now. Has there been that one thing that has just shocked you that you didn't even know going into it? 
uh, that one surprise, like, I don't know, uh, uh, there was a figure that was supposed to be made or anything like that. In that, in that regard, I mean, I was going to say everything has been a shock because I I just did it because Matt and I were bored of my figures and we wanted to talk about them. You know, I never thought about any, all the things that would go along with it. Yeah, yeah you guys know. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, you know, obviously there's always fun discoveries where people come out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. And I think I do love when we find things that we never never knew existed. Mm-hmm. Now that I collect autograph Hasbro's, I love when people come out of the woodwork and offer me signed Hasbro's or whatever, <laughs> and I can cut deals or whatever. That excites me very much. But um, I think, man, maybe my favorite discovery was finding that old San Francisco toy makers um, guide where we found the shark figure and the renegade. Oh, I thought that was that was pretty cool because, like, like I said, Matt and I are pretty deep, deep wrestling figure historians, and even that like threw us for a loop. Like, what? Yeah, there was no proof. There was no proof of that up until that point. Yeah, like that's was, crazy. Scott and I always talk about it. It's the LJNs, like when we were when we found out they were supposed to have articulated style. You know, we never even knew yeah, that's yeah, that. that's, imagine right. Oh, dude, that just yeah. blew blew us away because that's our childhood right there. You know, e- even the uh, the episode of the toys that made us where the guys explain that like the LJNs were an accident. They were just the, they were the two ups. Yeah, they were supposed to be scaled down. Yeah. Whoever the buyers were like, these are awesome. And they were like, yes, they are. Awesome. They <laughs> yeah, we meant to do that. Ginormous <laughs> recipe. But if you look back on it, like, what a decision that changed, like, the history of, like, wrestling figure fandom, right? Yeah, you know? exactly. Because if that failed, who knows if we'd even be sitting here talking about wrestling figures. And I don't think they'd be as unique because, like, all 80s figures are, like, that four and a half inch scale mm-hmm. to a degree, right? So that's what made LJNs and wrestling figures so larger than life and different yeah 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 exactly that was like the uh he-man one where it was just pure on toys that made us there was just pure debauchery after debauchery and i just loved it i'm not a big he-man guy i'm i've learned over the years through you know the show and all our friends Uh i couldn't believe that episode where it was like he-man was just like a complete cash grab like this guy's gonna be snake head and he has (laughs) snake arm like yeah it's just a way to make literally a way to make money and make toys like there's no rhyme or reason into the creativity of like what they're doing i couldn't believe that were you a gi joe fan too my brother was a gi joe guy so i played i had gi joes in the house and i my brother's a little bit older and i always had they're always around and i played with them a a ton when i was a kid what does your toy collection look like now outside of wrestling figures uh it's pretty much just sports stuff honestly it's new york sports stuff mcfarland starting lineups um i was okay I, i was really marking out for the starting lineup reboot from hasbro they only got that one nba line in we we've heard that it's on pause which is super disappointing to me because they even announced that there was going to be an nfl line mm-hmm. yep uh, um so i'm very butthurt about that but uh yeah so that's that's my only other real wheelhouse um i thought about like turtles and power rangers and things i've collected like as a kid but i just i just can't do it yeah the, the wrestling stuff i have takes up so much real estate there'd be like almost no point Yep, I hear so you. So I take yeah. so I take it you didn't get the Trey Young NBA starting lineup. I actually bought every single one. Oh, you did? Because I thought they were cool. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, and and I'm a big trading card guy. They came with a real official Panini NBA trading card that's valuable too. So yeah, I thought it was a pretty pretty cool. Yeah, Michael, are you a huge uh, sports fan as well? I do sports. Yeah, badminton. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's taking up pickleball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. actually, I did play pickleball for the first time in California, and it's all right. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm not really too big into sports. I did get the, the starting lineups of uh, LeBron James just because I like LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Um, but aside from that, I'll watch basketball when it's on, like at a bar and stuff. But not really into sports. I thought I thought the uh starting lineups with the real sneakers was such a cool thing i mean I, the no tats was rough but with the real sneakers was a nice trade-off i feel like that was know. by chance have you gotten the jordan mafex no i'm i've just become as i'm now that i tag with a uh, moose he's a big sneakerhead he's turned me into a sneakerhead which i never thought would happen but i wouldn't say i'm a sneakerhead but i'm much more sneaker conscious <laughs> than i was <laughs> yeah and i i I appreciate it a lot more. Check out the Jordan Mafex figures. Those come with Jordan ones. They're just beautiful. But anyway. Oh, oh I think I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, God. They're so good. Yeah. They're so good, yeah. man. All right. Let's change topics over to the major bendums. What has been the latest, Michael? 
Yeah, I mean, we just finished doing a pre-order for Macho Man, which was supposed to be the Macho Man that was released uh, back in the early 90s. Um, which was another and- another major pod discovery, too, that we weren't too sure of. Which was? Yeah, right, it, until it, that, that Macho Man was supposed to be in Series 1, Just Toys, mm-hmm. Bendems, you know. Yeah, and we found the artwork and, the, you know, even the trading card artwork, which we purchased from Guy Dorian, um, to be a part of our figure. So that's pretty cool homage to, like, figure history. For yeah, sure. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so uh, Guy Dorian actually did the trading card art for the, the actual uh, packaging that we'll be shipping. So, yeah, we had the Macho Man that was the unreleased Macho Man, finally bringing it out to the public. Uh, so that was available for two weeks alongside with a glow-in-the-dark trinity. We finished that up with that pre-order. Those figures are in production right now. And we are now focusing on the big rubber guys. Yes, those big, beautiful, is, big rubber guys. Which is um, Macho Man and Andre the Giant. And Andre the Giant, you get the option of choosing if you want black singlet or blue singlet or both. Yeah. Poses came out great. They really wanted, did. Yeah. Wh- what was the story behind going into choosing the poses? All right. Um, it was a lot of back and forth. Yeah, so we didn't want Macho to be too similar to his actual LJN release, so mm-hmm. that was one. And then the thing with Andre, which which Kinnick could probably elaborate on, because I think we'll the decision we made, I think we'll take a hit in the back end because we didn't want anybody in the LJN line. If you look back, if they have any kind of height to them, they're bent at the knees, like yep. Hogan, right. Andre, uh, Big John Stud, right? Big John Stud. We were like, you know what? let's make a true to form Andre. That's going to tower over your other figures. Like you know, his true height, make him truly be the giant. So we think, I mean, we're going to, you know, can it can elaborate, like I said, but uh, like the packaging is going to have to be a little altered and things like that. And, but we were like, you know, it's worth it to make it that much more of a eye catching product, you know, and something worthwhile for people. So that, that's where that thought went into for that. Mm-hmm. And then Macho, we just wanted to, uh, you know, update, like, you know, his, his LJN's kind of like, his early WWF run, we wanted him to be more the established era. He's a, he's a big deal. Top guy, macho man. Those figures came out great because it looks like it's like a, an upgraded version for the LJNs nowadays. And they came out fantastic. Like look at Andre's face, the sideburns and the, yeah, it looks great, man. Yeah, It's so good. Like it literally looks like it will tower over the LJN Hogan and like really be that WrestleMania three moment. That's what we're really hoping for. Yeah. And, And surprisingly, as simple as you think Andre would be, I think it's, and it could probably elaborate on this too. It was the most difficult we've had, like, I guess because his body's so unique, you know, like he really has like a really small pecs and kind of like he's not muscular, but he's ginormous. It's just like it's very hard. Yeah. It was hard to the back and forth. The sculpting on him yeah. must have been pretty difficult, huh? Well, there was like a lot of versions of him where we're like, you know, we're just looking at it going, something's just off about this. And it takes a big, you know, a collaborative effort of our whole team to be like, wait, something's just not right about this. And we keep going and going and going until we feel like it's right. Mm-hmm. And then you got to get every yeah. detail down because like th- his hands are open on the uh, prototype that Michael just showed. You got to figure out if you want a hand mm-hmm. closed, you want right. every decision. So, yeah. So uh, this was actually designed by TTD and then the sculpting is done by uh, Brian Beatty. So uh, Brian, Brian Beatty is now doing all of our big rubber guys. So, He's excellent to work with. So he he's a legendary sculptor. Has been around for twenty years, I believe. So he's he's got a lot of um, a lot of awesome stuff on his resume. So it was pretty cool when we were able to to snag him. Mm -hmm. You you guys went into doing the uh, big rubber guys. Like, was there any hesitancy to do that, or were you guys like we're doing this? Um, I mean, Kinnick was pretty adamant that it, we could get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously it came with obstacles and things like that. Like, um, we couldn't find a factory that would make it one piece, like a traditional LJN. Mm-hmm. But we think the way we make them, it's pretty seamless. You can't tell where the seams are, literally. So that's kind of like the cheat to it um, that gets it done. Mm-hmm. Where I mean, I don't think anyone's even really spotted it yet on any, <laughs> you know, but we couldn't. Yeah, couldn't find a factory to do it like they did it back in the day. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been like anything else. It's just growing pains. I mean, obviously, uh, 
the shipping and the weight was something that we had to take into yep. to right. account. That right. wouldn't be, you know, very easy. Um, but like I said, we have an incredible team. Like TTD designs these things. You know, uh, Knick is the one who's literally doing all the dirty work, talking to China, making sure that they understand what we want. And now we have Ryan Beatty sculpting. So it's it's pretty incredible. I take it you're up quite early for those uh, emails back and forth with overseas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I can also uh, attest for this that I have very weird sleeping habits. So uh, it, it works out fine true. for me. <laughs> true. He maybe like a year ago, he sent me a couple screenshots of him, and I was like, okay, I'm not. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I like I, I I appreciated what Kinnick did, but after that, I was like, I really appreciate what this guy does for the company because I don't know how he does it. So I take a cat nap like every two hours, like Kramer on Seinfeld's a couple times. <laughs> I, I I I'll probably pass out like around one o'clock in the morning, maybe midnight, and then I'll sleep for like two or three hours, and then I wake up and I'm I'm ready to go. Man. I, I drink a cup. I drink a cup of coffee <laughs> and then. Uh. Kanika has never not answered one of my texts in our four year relationship <laughs> at, at any hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have like a. And there is a certain hour where his uh, his phone will give you that do not disturb like message, but he always writes back. So I don't know why he does that. Yeah. It's so that like I can try to help me go to sleep, but it doesn't really work because I'm still looking at my <laughs> <Yeah>. phone. <laughs> uh, there you go. Oh, man. Well, there's uh, one uh, there's one week left on those pre orders for the Macho Man yeah. or the Macho Man and the Andres. Uh, one week, uh, price point fifty dollars. It's with free shipping. Uh, it's fifty five for Andre because he is taller and he weighs a lot more. Um, so there's a lot more material that's going into him. Plus, uh, it's, just, it's just so much more that that's going in. So we are actually, um, how I set it up was the lowest price point possible for the consumer because we we acknowledge that um, everyone's trying to scramble, uh, scramble and try to save some money. So we're trying to make it as affordable as possible for the consumers. And it comes with a protective case for the, the card as well, right? It doesn't come with the protective the, the the protector we sell those protectors separately but the protectors are separate them, um yeah so um but they're 25 dollars for a set of four for big rubber guys got it got it and uh, those we can have... hang or display on a shelf exactly yes yeah and, and the pa- the packaging itself is resealable you know it's a bubble with a sliding card so take care of your moc also... and loose collectors uh, yes yep. and it also okay. helps with durability and shipping and things like that got it but we, we do have protectors also for uh, major bendies. They're the same way. We have them for the ECW figures. <laughs> uh, I literally made, can I get those made for my personal use? But I'm <laughs> them, yes. but, yeah. and, and it's yeah. so freaking annoying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but um, we have the ECW protectors. We have the Hasbro uh, tag team protectors. And we will have Hasbro single uh, carded protectors coming in probably about two to three weeks. Awesome. Nice. And those weren't the only figures that you showed off this past week. Well, those were showed off a while back, but that's just going to segue over to the British Bulldogs that you showed off this past Tuesday or Wednesday night. Scott, if you want to bring them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't you have them? I do. Oh, uh, hold on one sec, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go for it. There's Davy Boy. This is Davy Boy. Love it. That's so cool. He you can package him with the bulldog under his arm. Yeah, so it's gonna be able to have Matilda's gonna be able to sit at the floor like you'd want like a dog to be, or Davy (laughs) can pick her up and have it under his arm to pose with. And Dynamite Kid. Oh, that's so good. On the back, so get that UK representation. Those look yeah. so good, man. Um, yeah, we're super excited about them. What was the decision behind the uh, going with the white tights? Because, I mean, basically the Bulldogs had, <clears throat> excuse me, the red, they had the blue, and they had the white, and then they had some trunks over. Um, what was the decision yeah. to go with all white? Just to do an updated version. You know, like everything, if we're going to do a guy that's already been in the line, we have to 
put some meat on the bone, right? Mm-hmm. There's got to be a reason to take a bite. Yeah, so, right. Um, that was the idea there to make them a little more toyetic, make them pop up, you know, updated version of what you had as, as a child. And then the other thing is LJNs aren't so common anymore. Like most people, even if you want them, you're going to pay astronomical prices for some of these LJN. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool to like be able to, you know, buy an Andre the Giant with a black strap, buy the British Bulldog and uh, Dynamite Kid. So we think that's cool too. Yeah. We had a gentleman on a couple of weeks ago who has a uh, LJN podcast and uh, he was talking, he was talking about how when he does his customs, he's already spending like 80 bucks on an LJN yeah, or it's, it's wh- crazy, whoever right? it may be. So yeah. yeah, those look good. I love the pose. Love the Mat- Matilda that comes under a, uh, Davy Boy's arm. That's awesome, man. It's the perfect accessory. It is. Right. It is. Yeah. Yep. I love it. That's great. Are there any chance of variants in the future? I don't know how long you have a deal with them to make figures for, but is there any thought to maybe doing them in different tights, different poses later on? I, I was going to bring to the team that I would like to do the baby blue. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Those for were sure, our, sure. those were definitely our favorite tights of theirs. And we always were a fan of yeah. the baby blue tights back in the day. Junkyard dog mm-hmm. wore them. Rock and Roll Express warm, so we were always a fan right. of those uh, those tights. But uh, Scott, if you want to bring up the images, yes, we got some close ups of them. So let me bring those up here. Okay, the uh, Dynamite Kid, I love the pose on him. What was go into that? Like, how did you guys all collaboratively collaboratively come together and uh, decide on that one? It's almost Ted RC. Uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the sculpting is kind of, like I said, T- it's TTD's imagination and then Brian Beatty's sculpting, so we kind of go off of that. But, like, this is one that he, he kind of came to us with that, and we were like, there was no, you know, revisions. We were kind of like, that's awesome, perfect. And then we all loved the idea that Davey could hold Matilda. We just thought that was yeah. pretty different. Have you guys had you any uh, issues signing anybody or, or, like, any trouble getting dynamite or anything? So, uh, I mean, honestly, that's the the luxury of and a lot of what Matt and I bring to the table in this mm-hmm. toy business is that I think in April for Matt and then in July for me, it'd be 20 years that we've been wrestling. Wow. Congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. Thank you. And that's a real 20 years of like wrestling every goddamn weekend. So <laughs> like we, it's not sitting made, in a desk you know, all day. <laughs> it's a, yeah. But I mean, you know what I mean? It's not like we're an independent wrestler who hasn't left his town. Like we've, we've really made a go of it and luckily and we've been blessed and we've made a lot of great friendships and connections and it's almost like it would be nuts to think of like who could we not track down at this point Mm -hmm. you know what i mean between the amount of people and uh it's really paid off in the sense that like even like and Kanik can talk about this like we just saw i did new york comic-con and i was signing we had to be signing with demolition so we were able to we brought them their checks for what their royalties what they were paid for the big rubber guys we brought them their finished samples and then they were so complimentary and appreciative it was just the coolest thing and i was like i just presented smash with the ljn that he never got yeah you know, 37 <laughs> years ago i'm still not over it that just, it was right it was just and i don't think he is either but it yeah. was like a really cool it was just something i never thought i'd be able to do in my life but it was just it was just a really cool moment you know just it was, to be able to do that it was so cool because like first of all i got to meet these guys that i used to watch on tv and then they held Lily out of products, looked me dead straight in the eye and said, this has to be the best figures of us ever. And I was oh, like, wow, that is fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were just so nice about everything. Cause like every time I saw them later on in the convention, cause I was there the whole week, they would stop me and be like, yo, those figures are fucking awesome. Literally outside of the Javits Center, I'm buying a hot dog. Here comes Axe and Smash. Like, those figures are fucking great. Uh, <laughs> That's so that, awesome. And, and the that, fact that you yeah, can put the mask with them too is just such a great touch. I love and that. And I think that like at the end of the day, like unless you're Dolph Ziggler and you have a heart of, you know, pure darkness, like <laughs> having an action figure matters to people. You know what I mean? It's a big accomplishment. and it's a It's a very, you know, flattering thing that i think a lot of people in the wrestling business really care about mm-hmm. you know so it's cool to bring that to some people yeah, oh, yeah that's awesome and michael all the hard work that you've done when they tell you that that's got to be like worth it right there i mean that's so rewarding this is i'm, I'm ha- i have more rewarding feelings doing this than i've had anything else in my fucking career mm-hmm. um given i only probably really sold paper and shitty uh 
uh, oh, Phil's. <laughs> I'm not going to say the name of the company I worked for. Those who will not be <laughs> named. <laughs> Those that won't be named. But it, it is so cool because, like, e- even on Saturday night when um, we went to the uh, – Brian had a cap show in Melville. I went there, and I got to hang out with Sabu, and he was signing a bunch of his figures, and he was just so appreciative of everything and just kept on saying how grateful he was that uh, we made a figure of him. It's just, these are guys that I used to watch on TV daily. I looked up to, and now they're just blowing smoke up my ass. <laughs> but it's cool. <laughs> Take it, man. Just accept the compliments. There you yeah. go, dude. No, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Um, I've talked to a few wrestlers, and it's kind of funny how back in the '80s, you know, they never talked about toys. Nowadays, or video games, or video games, care. and now all the wrestlers are talking about the toys and video games. I mean, I, I've explained this my whole career because Matt and I were, like, so young when we started. We were, like, thrown to the trenches. Mm-hmm. And we were such fans. Like, we're all the same age. Like, wrestling was so romanticized. There's video games and bed sheets and fucking <laughs> toys and everything you can imagine growing up. And we're in the locker room of these guys who, like, all they had was, like, a black and white fucking magazine at, at, at the most. <laughs> You know, so right. they just yeah. didn't understand it. They thought like we were like the biggest dweebs and marks, and it's like it's just different. You know, it's 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 different for us the way you know our passion for this hits a little different than the way it does for you. That's all. And now everyone's like that, pretty much. You know, yeah. Was, yep. Somebody made uh, I, I think it was our good friend Brian Breaker. He made the joke. He goes, "I don't think Arn Anderson and Rick Rude were talking about toys or galoobs or hasbro no. or anything when they were Fuck driving down no. the road you know <laughs> no hell no yeah yeah can you picture rick rude having a conversation being pissed off that galoob didn't make an action figure of him like, of course well, not. What, i do know for a fact arn was pissed about the bald spot and the galoob I heard <laughs> about that. yeah and i think he was so mad that they made the running change with the the cover, the cover up, up. <laughs> i think I, I i'm pretty sure because he complained uh yeah. can it going back to the bulldogs quick question for you yeah. Are there going to be two packs? Are they going to come two per card, or is it going to be solo? Um, I'm still debating it because I was going to say we're still kind of working on that. <laughs> we don't have confirmation. If, if yeah. it's, uh, I, my, I, uh, my thing is, I would want it to look like our packaging, how it is now, but a two pack. I don't want to make that ginormous LJN WF. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that thing was that thing will take a looks like a flat screen tv like it's too big you know? <laughs> it would yeah. take up all one shot i wouldn't want to do yeah i wouldn't want to do that to anybody or ourselves and ship it but yeah we're still yeah. trying to figure that out okay i'm I, i'm thinking single carded for my ocd because we already have so many already on single cards mm-hmm. like why just not continue it in that path and have right. matilda come with davy boy uh but i understand it is cool to have it in that two pack it's literally probably going to be a decision that we make last minute. Well, like those, and I also think <laughs> most things that we do, what, depending <laughs> on what the factory tells us about it, too. You know, if it can be done or not. I'm sure if it can be done yeah. or not, or if one costs an exceptional amount of money and the other doesn't. Mm-hmm. That kind of opens the flood doors, we'll though, doesn't it? Because yeah. all future two packs, you'd have to to make the same consideration. Like if you do another demolition or you put out, another that's what I'm saying. Then. We should have made demolition two back then. So it's like, if it, that's, that's what's making me lean towards single. Keep pack. it single. I right. get you. Yeah. yeah. For now. Right. Yeah. Right. And Scott, do you have other pictures? I have some videos that can accept me. Let me bring those up real quick. So what Hasbro's don't you guys have signed so far? I keep a list on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain ones, I mean, actually, someone put it in our Facebook group today, but it's it's a Rick Rude sign, but it says to Bernard. Oh, no. Rick Rude, which I'm like, I can't do that. Like, I can't, even though I, it's a holy grail and something I've literally almost like never seen, I can't do it. Um, you might have to change your ring name to Bernard, dude. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't rationalize that, but yeah. <laughs> So Rick Rude's a big one. Texas Tornado, Andre the Giant. I don't think I've ever seen a Giant Gonzalez or a Ludwig Borga autographed. I don't think I don't, so. There's a couple of crazy ones. Oh man, I uh, can't go into uh, talking about these, man. Any any details or anything? Or we just yeah, saw so, Eddie. Uh, Here's Andre now. 
That's Andre the Giant. Um, see the nine inches. This is then... this is my favorite big this rubber guy we've ever done. So great. And this was my idea. I said, we we have Ric Flair signed for X amount of years. Mm-hmm. We got to do something different. Let's do eighties promo Flair, like that everyone knows and loves, but I've never really had a great figure to represent. You know that Saturday is... at three o five, Ric Flair. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Six oh five Eastern time, dude. Six oh five Eastern. I was gonna say <laughs> six oh five for me and Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. That's a great looking flare, man. Good job on that one, especially totally. in the suit, because we've gotten so many flares. Right over the years, I'm like, we gotta catch people's attention with this, you know, just a flare and trunks, whatever. Anyone could do that, and we will do it. But yep, I was like, out the gate, we gotta do '80s promo flare. Love that's it. really like become a thing of its own and like pop culture and yes. rap songs and whatever. Yeah. Very so. much so. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that was actually the rubber sample. So that's um, the pre-production sample for before they go into actual production of um, figure. But um, so what you're seeing there is probably what will be in your hands when you receive it. Okay. Nice. Mach- the pre-orders for Macho and Andre and this Friday. Yep. Uh, estimated ship date? I Roughly think, ballpark? I, I think I put uh, March on the website. Okay. March 2024. I expect it to be in hand much earlier. I just, just in case there's any issues, I say March. <laughs> just say, just Chinese New Year, guys. <laughs> Chinese New Year. <laughs> hey, dude, That's just... what I'm actually concerned about. Hey, dude, just say March, yeah. March of 25. Just say it, and then if they get it earlier. It's <laughs> like, like when you go, a year earlier, yeah. it was like, hey. Yeah, it's like, God, it's that, awesome. would, that would still be earlier than most pre-orders <laughs> that go on these days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's like when you go to Outback, and they say it's a 45-minute wait, and you get seated in 20 minutes. It's like a win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Makes you feel good. Pre-order for Bulldogs? It'll start in December. Beautiful. Uh, you can see that we have the resin samples already in hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a few co- corrections that we're going to make uh, for a Davy Boy, and that'll probably only take about a week, two weeks to get done. Uh, and then the mold process can start. So that'll be in November. December, we'll put it up for pre order. And that means the production time will take about three to four weeks once we put the uh, order in with the factory, and it'll take like another month. For it to arrive, so I don't think it's going to be that too far off from the actual pre-order time. Cool, uh, That's awesome, Scott. Just go ahead and pre-order mine for Christmas. Thanks, dude. Yeah, anyway, no <laughs> what, what a nice, what a nice gift. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with all these third-party companies, who do you think is missing? Like, is there certain wrestlers that you're like, oh man, I wish somebody would just grab so and so? Good, good question. You don't want them tipping their hand too much, Jeff, because they could have names. That on too. The- yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. Even, I probably shouldn't answer this honestly, <laughs> right? I'm sure. I'm sure, Hastel Toys is listening. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's obviously like tiptoeing around those legends contracts, you know. And mm-hmm. and we've learned through this process that everyone's different. You know, there's exclusive and non-exclusive ones. Do you have an era that you would lean more heavily towards, you think, like 80s, 90s, you know? So, I mean, guys, I'm an ECW guy, so that's that's my be-all, end-all. So <laughs> we we just did uh, the first line of Extreme Bendies with Tommy Dreamer, Sandman, Sabu, Raven. Mm-hmm. They each have bloody variants. It was a huge hit. We're working on Series 2 of that. Nice. Um, which we're very excited about. We already have most, pretty much three of the four talents signed for that um so that that's exciting for me Mm -hmm. um i think one of the problem with the bendy sometimes is i think because it's a very autographable item when the talent is deceased it's kind of like a little less of a hit for us unless they're you know macho man randy savage or somebody right legendary like i would love to do like a bald mahoney major bendy oh yeah uh, chris can chris candido you know some of the guys that have passed um that's that's something that i personally would like to get done okay well, I'm sure you guys get a lot of requests too from fans, right? Like, oh, you guys should do so and so. Where do you see the most requests coming from? Like, for what specific era do you get a ton of ECW? Um, I, I, I think the ECW one. I mean, obviously, like I'm biased because I love ECW so much, but it was my idea and I was pushing for it, and then it sold very well. And I think 
they kind of sold Matt Cardona that they sold so well. <laughs> it's nice we to get that back up, that move, assurance. Yes. Yeah, it'll move. Yes, yeah, so that we can move on with <laughs> for that. For sure. Yeah, for sure. That that was a big big win for me. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do think the feedback from the ECW line was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, it was cool to do yeah. like I, I like when we can do Ben bendies that are little missing links, you know, like Macho Man was supposed to be in series one. We made Brian Pillman and he fits right in with your, you know, the you know, Brett and Owen and Davey, you know, it's yeah. our foundation or double J in ninety five we did with the straps. You know, I like I like that kind of stuff. Gangrel, you know, he could have fit in. Um so those ones are fun for me. Gotcha. Wait. Well, I mean, you're never going to top smash in my opinion in the LJN or the big rubber guys that I, I've complained about this on the show so many times that yeah. like LJN literally set out to uh, ruin our childhood by not giving I mean, us the other half of demolition. And you guys, you, you filled that hole in the collection. And honestly, in my opinion, I don't know that you'll top it, but I want to see you try. <laughs> I would love keyword to do brother love who's off the table at the moment, yeah. legal, legally, but yeah. that would be a big get for me. And actually, uh, I meant to bring this to the team. I think Bad News Brown is something that we can get done, which I think would be pretty cool. No, oh, we literally had yeah. that conversation last week. Like, if you could add them to the line and then you pick out of four names, uh, top two for us was Butch Reed. The other one was Bad News Brown. That's a huge nice. name to add in. Absolutely. That would wow. be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. I know another party that has Bad News signed. But uh, probably not too exclusive, so he's doable. Excellent. Wait, waiting on that ta- Todd Champion and uh, Firebreaker Chip. No, we're not. Oh, whoa, Jesus. <laughs> no, we're not. Oh, we're <laughs> Nobody's not. Nobody's waiting oh, on man. that, Jeff. Only you. Oh, dude. Oh, oh, man. Sorry, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I got to read Ranger the... Ross, though. <laughs> Still a possibility. Oh my God. <laughs> I got to read the room better. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you do. Yeah. Michael, how about you? Anybody that you would like to see? Because there's a lot of third party companies. Is there anybody you'd like to see? Like for us, I, one of the ones we would love to see is Beverly Brothers. Yeah. Um, so that's actually a big request that I get. Um, I probably get requests for like a laundry list of names every day through the. Uh, yeah, but sometimes it's like, make Bret Hart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. No, we like, can. <laughs> go to Target. And, uh, and you then, did Marty and... You did Marty Gennetti. Why don't you do Sean? Yeah, okay, well. Uh, uh, we might be guilty would love of to. that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, would, and, I would love to, but. And then Brian wants to know why I'm drinking so early in the day. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would actually like to do an Andy Kaufman. Oh. You have mentioned that, yeah. Nice. That's a yeah. that's a good callback right there, man. In a, like a bendy or a big rubber guy? Or what are your. I, I would do a big, both. Big rubber guy. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Big rubber guys is, the, is definitely the, the more lucrative one, I think. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. That yeah. would be awesome. <laughs> totally would fit the era, too. I do, I do want to, as the line grows, I want to dabble into 80s NWA talent. Nikita Koloff. <laughs> yeah, so often We might have overlooked. signed one this week, actually. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> a, a w, or excuse yeah. me, an NWA 80s guy? I'll just leave it at that. We might have signed an NWA talent. From the eighties this week, dude, he got the Mulkies. <laughs> <God Damn. laughs> We're in. What? 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 I love the Mulkies. What? Who doesn't? No. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So let the uh, guessing games begin because it could be Nikita. Could be Tony totally Blanchard. A... Yeah. Barry Windham. You go. You, you go on and on, guys. All right, all right, I mean, right. we do have to fill in around <sighs> that Ric Flair interview table. So there you go. I mean, <laughs> there you go, man. Good job. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you guys coming on. But before we go, Brian, we actually have we, we all know that you're a huge New York Mets fan. Yep. So I thought I'd pull some trivia for you. And these might be oh, some boy. easy, easy layup questions, but okay. I, I was <laughs> I was at work rushing, so uh bear with me. All right. <laughs> all right. Sure. All right. So for New York Mets. Who scored the winning run in the infamous Bill Buckner era game for the Mets in the 86 series? Uh, it'll be Ray Knight. Very good. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Who was the last New York Met to win the National League MVP? And I'll give you four choices. <coughs> David Wright, <coughs> Strawberry, Pete Alonzo, or none of the above? None of the above. Very good. Two for two so far. Dude knows his okay. Mets. Yeah. Uh, who was the last Cy Young winner for the Mets? Gooden, Dickey, DeGrom, or Tom Seaver? 
Ooh, Degrom. Very good. Yeah. Man, three for three. Yeah, three you, for but three. D- Dickie had one. Dickie had one too, but Degrom was the the more recent. Yeah. Dickie did in twenty twelve. He was Blue Jays. Yeah. No, no, he was with the Mets. Oh, he won it with the yeah. Mets. Yeah. Ah, yep. okay. Yeah. It was bizarre. We're huge baseball fans over here, so uh, the, I know. Yeah, I, I thought it'd be. Uh, I thought this would be fun. All right. Do you get? Do you guys play the grid every day? Uh no. I was doing that for a while, and then I kind of got lost, and I was like, "All right, I guess." Oh man, I like literally have my morning coffee and do my grid every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jumping on the app right away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pete Alonso, one of three players to win the home run derby back to back years. Which years did he win it? 2018 and 19, 19 and 21, 21 and 22, or 22 and 23? Well, he didn't win 23 because it was the first time he lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, so it's 19, 18 and 19, 18, 19, 19 and 21. COVID knocked out. Wait, two. no, 19 and 20, 19 and tw- 20, 21. Yeah. 19, 20, 21. Yeah. Well, 20, right? uh, 20 was canceled because of uh, COVID, but right. But you're right, right. so your final answer is B. Yeah. Dude, you're spot on. Okay. <laughs> Man. Yep. I'm serious baseball fan or serious math fan too, for sure. Yeah. You definitely know your stuff, man. Except this year, they were god awful and embarrassment. Yeah. But you still got Pete Alonso. I love that guy. I do too, but uh, my sources are tell- like there was a lot of stuff about him being like not a good locker room guy, and I didn't believe it. But some of my sources have confirmed that this possibly may be true. Uh, oh, okay. I know. I was, su- you know, it was super disheartening and or alarming. Huh. I don't know if you guys saw, but Tommy Pham came out and had an interview saying it was the least hardworking team he'd ever been on. Oof. Tommy Pham said and that. Made, like, Tommy Pham said that about the Mets. Wow. Yeah. Oof. The 2023 Mets. So I was like, man, when you're a fan, that's a hard thing to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, rumor. And Tommy Pham's been on like six teams, so that's saying yeah, that is saying <laughs> something. Yeah. Well, the rumor is yeah. is they're in on Otani. So I, without a shadow of a doubt, the Mets are going to offer him the most money. Will he take it? I don't know, but they will offer him the most money. You, you think so? Huh? Yes, because Uncle Stevie doesn't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, yeah. after last season, holy crap! Yeah, backed no, up yeah. the Brinks that, truck. But that didn't work at all. Uh, it did not, yeah, unfortunately. No. no. Yeah. No. And last question: Who is the only solo pitcher to throw a no hitter for the Mets? Degrom, Seaver, Johan Santana, or R. A. Dickey? Johan Santana. Man, you, was... you know your New York Mets stuff. Five yeah. for five, man. Nice. Yeah. Thought we throw up a little change up, change up over to you, man. But uh, great no, job, fun, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, no. As I said, they might have been I'm, layups. I'm serious. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> They're not, they weren't layups. I call them in between. <laughs> they were about a three yeah. point five. We'll say, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't you guys get your plugs out of the way one more time? I got this up. Connect. <laughs> you want me to do it? <laughs> yeah, Talk to do. a man, Randy Savage, Andre the Giant, Big Rubber guys on sale. One more week to go. Majorpodmerch.com. Uh, I mean, they're they're incredible. I, I wouldn't miss out. The pre-order is the order. That's the one thing that we always have to stress uh, for people who are unaware. Like, this is it. So if you don't get them from us, you're going to pay secondary prices on eBay, and you don't want to be caught doing that. So mm-hmm. get them all you can. Start your Big Rubber Guy collection. Um, we're super proud and excited about them. You should be. They are fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Panic, as I always say, man, it's a pleasure having you on. So Brian, it's a pleasure being here. Yeah, we always look forward <laughs> to seeing you, dude. And Brian, it's, <laughs> it was a pleasure having you on, man. As we always tell Canik, you guys have open door policies to come on. And even if you want to just talk baseball, we can do that. We'll just shoot the shit, you know, stuff like that. But of course, man, I, I just want to say uh, when I got re signed by WWE in 2016, I had this weird little like ritual, like, on Wednesday mornings when I flew home, I would always listen to you guys. So oh, I'm sorry. I dude. just want to say, you I'm know, sorry, man. No, I'm just saying you guys were on the ground floor and you kind of opened the doors for what Matt and I are doing now. So I just want to say thank you for everything you guys have done and uh, I appreciate it. Much appreciated, man. We, thank uh, you, Brian. we greatly lot, appreciate man. it. It means a lot to Thanks. us. So uh, be safe tomorrow night. Have fun at the impact tapings and 
Gauntlet for the gold. I'm going to be the number one contender, and your ratings are going to go up. This is going to be great. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. Yeah. Let's get this yeah. done. I think it's perfect. There you go. There you go. <laughs> guys, as always, thank you for coming on. And uh, any you guys have an open door policy anytime. Cool, man. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank, you, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Let's go! Jeff and Scott, the Tomb Brothers, busting out the ring. But we don't take it out the box, MOC. Happy toy hunting, we'll see you next week. We're the OGs of WFP. Fully poseable, thank you all for listening. It ain't no storyline, real life siblings. So everybody go and do your toy spotting. Hashtag Fig Life, adios from the Kings.